people settle in here. Oh, I hope with it being on selfie, I don't look like a left-handed golfer. All right, what's up? Mike, well, this will go up. I'll, I'll upload this after we're, we're done with it too. So uh, anything you miss in class, you'll be able to watch later. Yo, yo, brother. Hey, from Sweden, nice. Let's, uh, just gonna plug my phone in, get some. Okay, so it, it's reversed because of selfie mode. So I'll switch it around and then to read your comments, I'll have to just go step behind the camera. All right. Thailand, wow, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this around so you guys can see, and then I'm just gonna have to step behind the camera to be able to see what you're saying. Yeah. No full swings for a few weeks, ouch, that's, that's not good. All right, we got some people filing in. I'm just putting the towel over the computer so it doesn't overheat in this Florida, Slovakia. What's up, Thomas? Whoa, coach, what's up? From Pakistan, what's going on? Los Angeles, what's up, Ethan? All right, I'm gonna just start hitting a few balls. I've already warmed up. I've been out here for like an hour, UK. Mohammed, thanks, brother. Uh, I've been out here for about an hour warming up, but now we're just gonna keep practicing a little bit. Of course I'm rooting for Europe this week. Just always have, so why would I stop now? Even though I live down in America and live with an American girl, I'm going to be rooting for Europe. Hey, from Australia. What's up, Ryan? Indianapolis. How about them Colts? Yeah, Brooks, uh, it's gonna be a good, good Ryder Cup. coming through here how are we doing all right i'll just tell you guys a little bit about what i'm doing right now because i've already done my like warm up i've loosened up i've done some slow motion work just on the technique so now i'm going to transition into playing and reacting to a target so you're pretty familiar if you've seen any of my range vlogs i'll get a stick down on the top of the line that's just for alignment but then this stick back here this is basically the decision line. So from the Vision 54 stuff, I'm gonna make my rehearsals, pick my targets and do all my technical thinking behind that. And then when I cross over that and get into this box, it's just play. And this is where I'm trying to um, simulate what it's like on the golf course. So uh, let's rock and roll. thin but basically this this little chunk of my practice what I'm evaluating myself on is the routine not the result 
very easy to be on the range and just get so caught up with the technique or the result and not practice the scene. Pull 10, 10 balls to do this little chunk of my practice. One more and come with questions. Hot, hot, hot. Oh, I know, it's 100 degrees out here. What did you think of the APT? Uh, I loved it. I, they did a really good job. They really, really did. So I'm, I'm pumped to play their event in a, uh, in a few weeks near, uh, near Dowell. I say Dallas because that's where I'm flying into, but it's technically in Brownwood, Texas. Um, so come to Arizona. That's actually uh, could be happening next year. I've been there once before, once before, like six years ago. I did uh, the final auditions for the big break out in Arizona. What's going on? What's up, Charlie? I am going to play the Brownwood one, and it's actually going to be Stableford, because I guess historically, like, 30 under par wins that one, so they're uh, doing it as a, they're doing that as a Stableford event, so that'll be a pretty fun change of pace. Did you know about Pakistan? What do you mean? That there's viewers from Pakistan? I didn't know that. I'm, what's up, Tim? Good morning. You're waking up nice and early for us. I appreciate that. Well, I do now. Yeah, it's going to be fun to play that one. I guess uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I actually am working on right now. So what, uh, it's something that Dan and I started working on maybe in the springtime and then throughout the summer, obviously, through playing a lot, maybe I got away from it a little bit. But those two weeks with Ben, we, we spent a lot of good time after we missed the cut in before you go practicing and kind of honing in. So for me, I'm paying attention to what the, the club's doing on the way back because I have a tendency of the club getting kind of behind me and deep where I like cheat, sh I like shallow it at the top, but then that just makes me get steep in transition and then have to tilt up to shallow it out. So what we're doing is I imagine there's like a stick through the end of the club and I basically want to drag it across the left side of my body and then from here it's up so then this stick I would love it pointing down my, my heel line and then from the top the next move is just a nice little bump this way and the club just will naturally shallow out and I can just turn through it pretty so I just rehearse that quite slowly and then over the ball just let it go so that the playoff in Oakdale 
was a really, really good test of that because the four shots I hit on those par fives, I just trusted my routine, stood over the golf ball, and let it go, and I hit it well. And then there's just little things I look for with the shot that I can evaluate, like ball flight, divot, like I can tell if I'm getting a little too steep, which is the one thing that we're always, always working on. And I get a little steep in transition, and then I have to tilt. So I'm kind of always thinking about keeping this placket on my shirt level as I rotate and let this kind of um, crunch, as if like an oblique crunch through the golf ball. See what, uh, what's being said here. The chats disappear on the phone. This is kind of annoying. Any uh, any questions you guys got right now? Pakistan for Q school. What Q schools in Pakistan? And even if I just uh, that's not something that would be in my my finances. Nor, um, yeah, I just. Uh, Playing in Asia or anything like that. Yeah, just playing in Asia, just not um, not in the cards for me. My life is over here, and favorite part of my game right now, probably my short game is really on point right now, and just in, in adapting to Bermuda grass. Describe my relationship with uh, golf in three words. Love, hate, and joy. <laughs> I think love and hate is probably everybody. I'm just going to spin this around and maybe do, do a few questions now. Um, I've thought about switching putters, but it's not the putter. I've got a new putter coming to me right now that I'm going to just test around with, but it's not the putter. I don't hit bad putts. You got to understand that like I'm documenting every tournament I play. So even when you think of the best players in the world, we're used to watching the best that week make a lot of putts because that's why they're playing the best that week. But um, like I still roll, I hit a lot of good putts. I don't three putt very often. And uh, it's not about changing the putter. It's just about <laughs> just being patient and keep doing what you're doing because my technique's solid, my routine is solid. And then throw in the fact that on this like mini tour grind, you're playing courses week to week that aren't consistent week to week. Whereas what we watch on TV, they're playing the same types of conditions every week. Oh, thanks dude. Man. Oh, cool. Thanks. Anka. Uh, any plans to come to Australia? No, no plans to come to Australia. Tiger versus Phil. Ah, tiger. Who's winning the Ryder Cup? 
the uh, Europe. <laughs> I think Europe's gonna win the Ryder Cup. Sorry, that one right before it disappeared. I don't know how to bring it back. No. no, there's no way to bring it back. What's up, Kraken? So yeah, I've got a new putter coming and I'll, uh, could be a change just looks wise or, or the way it, it strokes, but any junior golf tips, uh, you just have to enjoy it. You just have to enjoy it. Like that's the number one thing. I spent many years not enjoying it and that makes it really, really hard to want to get out there. Any advice for a new college player not doing great in tournaments? Uh, maybe just think about it less because the more you focus on the result, the harder it is to make those results happen. So you have to reverse engineer the result. So how are you going to score well? You just have to reverse engineer that. So it doesn't necessarily mean a, a new college player. It's any, any type of player. So just reverse engineer how you are going to play better and then make it as much in your control as you possibly can and if you're thinking about the score and where you, you stay in the tournament and making the team and all of that that's not in your control you can't control the outcome so just control your work I don't know I think Tony is gonna to be pretty impressive I've, I've had the fortune of getting to know Tony back in PJ Tour Canada days and he's uh, he's come on amazing in the last five years so I think he's gonna impress a lot of people out there My driver settings, uh, it's just a 9.5 head. I'll get it, I'll show you. So this is my driver settings, an M3, 9.5. I've got the weights. It's not a left-handed driver, it's just because the, the camera's flipped. Um, yeah, it was set to 10 and a quarter just to give me a little bit of left work, but I, I tweaked it a bit this summer and this is a really good setting and I'm driving it really, really well right now. That's the driver settings. And the stats that I keep on my wedges, I just keep track of like the uh, wedge drills, 30, I'll get into that. But the stats that I keep on my wedges is just prox you know how far I had and then how close I hit to the hole and then from those, I can see what needs work and what needs kind of maintenance or I can see where I want to lay up to. But wedge drills for 30 yards, you just, that's something where I think it's, it's more play. Give yourself 30 yards with three balls and just work on getting up and down. Like that's really the best type of drill you can do for 30 yards. For 70 yards, that's just more feel and this is very good work for that. Like if you just stop thinking technique and just really think of feeling it and maybe get a feel for how big a swing you need to make, how much turn you need to make, that's the best drill I could give you for a 70 yard wedge shot. But 30, you just gotta play. So give yourself 30 yards from rough, from fairway, bump and runs high and just play getting it up and down because that's where you tap into the creative side of your wedges because wedge play is unique player to player sure there's some technique that needs to be solid but rhythm and visualization comes kind of innately and that that's what those little 30 yard shots just working on getting up and down does peace golden enjoy work How many like shots in a range session would be too many? Uh, too many would be if you have to, if you, the minute you start getting tired and sloppy, or making hitting making swings or hitting shots anyways, that's too many. So that number is going to change for everybody. Somebody it could be a hundred, somebody it could be fifty. The minute you start getting sloppy, that's when you've hit too many golf balls, and that's when it's time to maybe go putt, go on the course, and then maybe come back to the range when you're refreshed again. I do. Uh, 
I do have a schedule written out on what my practice days are, but I kind of write them as I go. So I'll keep track of like 10 balls like this and then 20 balls of this work and then that's how I will uh, keep track of my practice. And it's all in an Excel spreadsheet. I'll spin the camera back around so I don't look like a lefty. I have the TaylorMade Ardmore 2 L neck, but I've got the Juno coming. I'll show you my putter here. So this is the putter I've been using since November of last year. And statistically, it's probably the best I've putted in a long, long time. But I'm just getting the, the Juno in because I'm going to try going back to a blade just for uh, a little change of pace and looking down at something different. camera, have a look at some of what you're saying. How often do I replace wedges? I go through about two sets of wedges a year. So I replace it once a year probably. And how do I practice partial wedges? Just repetition. So I've got a green. So I've got a green right here which I'll probably do a live stream maybe next week, like a short game live stream. So I can go back, you know, as far as 75 yards here, practicing the this green and the greens out in the range. I can go to like a hundred yard green right there, but I practice my wedge play through repetition. So I make sure when I'm out here, I don't get bogged down with this. And I make sure I spend a lot of time hitting wedge shots because for us professionally, that's where we can gain a lot of strokes. And that's where you don't want to be throwing strokes away inside 100 yards. All right, we'll hit a couple more. Actually, so this is the 10th ball in this thing, so then I'm going to switch into something a little different. my driver I try to not have any aids on the ground often like unless I'm working straight up on the technique but when it comes to like wanting to work on hitting shots and visualizing fairways I want to make this look as much like the actual tee as I can so right now like I've been driving the golf ball pretty well so when I work on driver I don't hit a lot of balls maybe the max I'll hit is like 10 back back here and I'll just want visualize the shots I want to hit and just do that. When I get out on the golf course, my course, I hit a lot of drivers, so that's really good driver work for me. I think it's a misnomer spending a lot of time working on drivers. A lot of professionals don't spend a lot of time pounding drivers. The only time pros are really honing in on driver is if it's really bad or they're maybe dialing in a new shaft or a new head or a new setting but if you go to a PGA Tour event on Tuesday and Wednesday you're not going to see guys pounding drivers because you want to conserve your energy and uh, if you 
have your technique sound with your irons, it's very easy to translate it up into a driver. I think a lot of amateur golfers spend way too much time hitting drivers on the driving range. It's very easy to get sloppy after drivers because it's the most, it's the fastest swing, so it's the most energy absorbing. See, that's my miss right now. I'm just body stopping and I'm just kind of full drawing it. I don't like that because I get stuck. So I'm just being really mindful of the lower body with my driver right now. So again, this is something where my rehearsal, I'll do really slow motion. What I want to feel. Now I pick a target. Go. I want to make sure I'm still breathing and relaxed. The tension kills everything. Especially if you hit a couple four drivers on the range, then you start panicking and you want to. You start steering it more. You want to hit it better. Sometimes it's just better to put it back in the bag and hone it in on the golf course if you have that luxury. So right now I'm just visualizing target. So I basically have the target right here and I just want to let it go. It's like a hundred plus degrees and humid here. It's warm. Right, I'm gonna flip this camera back around and just sit down and kind of close this out. How do you come back after a bad year of golf? I don't think there's like a, a way to do that. Like you just, how much, how much resolve do you have, I guess? You want to come back after a bad year, a bad day, a bad hole. It's just on your resolve and, and your focus. And if you're focused heavily on the results, making it a better year, you're going to have a hard time because results don't dictate everything. Like if you look at Tiger Woods, for example, early in his career, wins made a good year. This year he won once, the first time in five years. And I bet you he would say this is probably one of the better years he's had on on tour ever and it's not because of wins it's because of the process the fight back and, and the resolve and the bounce back and all of that so judging yourself solely on results making it a good year versus a bad year is uh is hard what do we think about to keep him out in the zone and swing thinking about tempo i just think about basically I think about the rhythm of the, the the core and the lower body. I just want to imagine like I'm throwing something kind of sidearm. When I'm really in the zone, I just get to the top and it's just like I throw the golf ball to the target. That's the feel I have. It might not translate for everybody, but that's that's the feel I get when I'm really in the zone. So in my rehearsals, I just want to hone that in. And if I'm struggling, I try to just get back to that feel like this right side and right elbow is just kind of tossing the golf ball to the target. Um, the perfect bag, other than a TaylorMade bag, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I'm sorry. I know I like following Vessel golf bags on Instagram. They make really cool custom golf bags, uh, so they're worth they're worth a good follow. And their bags are really nice. And they make all the a lot of custom tour bags. So they make like Tiger's bag, Jordan Spieth's bag, Julian Surrey's, Jacksonville Jaguar bag. Like they're just a cool follow. So follow them on Instagram, Vessel Golf. What's my dream car? Uh, Tesla. Any Tesla. 
Teslas are my dream cars, always have been. <laughs> I think I'm gonna sign off here in a, in a minute or two, guys. So let all those questions flood in and then I'm gonna probably go out on the golf course. I haven't seen anyone come through the first hole here in a while, so I'm gonna go out on the golf course and just uh, have some fun out there. Oh, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't, I mean, I misunderstood that, but clubs, I haven't hit any other clubs other than PXG clubs in the last five years, and PXGs are pretty, pretty awesome, so, I mean, that's the only thing I have. I haven't hit a Callaway, I haven't hit a Ping, I haven't hit a Titleist. I really don't have a need to, so, it's weird asking, yeah, there's just, I don't have a reference point, so I don't have really an opinion on what else is good out there. I think probably everything's pretty good, but I've been trusting TaylorMade, so that's where I'm at good way to practice on the course keep your stats learn from your stats another good way is play like a worst ball scramble or play a best ball scramble just to get the feeling of different pressure um, and then another way to play would be no drivers just irons like you're practicing all of these things or practice missing greens on purpose so you can work on your your scrambling your, your up and downs or another great way to practice on the course is, is keep track of where you lost your focus. Don't even keep track of score. Keep track of, did I accomplish my routines? Did I lose my focus? Did I think about score? And, and mark those things down. And then the next time you do it, mark those things down. And then you might notice, oh, they get less and less and less as you become more aware of them. And then you have more control over your mind out there. Come to come to Tampa, yeah. I'm, uh, that's uh, that's very likely. I used to live down there, so uh, might might make my way over there in, in the new year, play a tournament, or try to qualify for the uh, um, Valspar, something like that. All right, guys, I'm gonna go. Uh, speaking of practice on the golf course, I'm gonna go. Is it my dream to be on the PJ Tour? Yes, yes, it is definitely. I wouldn't still be doing this if I didn't think that was achievable. Granted, I understand it's going to be a hard road and I may never get there and I'm okay with that whereas 10 years ago tell me I wasn't going to get there I would have really struggled with that so it's my dream but I understand life changes so who knows um, but yeah I'm going to go out on the golf course and, and practice and do exactly that I'm going to keep track of where my focus was and if I compromise my focus and just basically mark those down and see if I uh, can do better than the day before all right, guys, uh, I'm going to upload this tomorrow, too, so you'll see it if, if you want to recap anything that has been said, and maybe I'll look through the comments and try to answer them in the comments on tomorrow's video. So uh, thanks to everybody that's tuned in, and I will uh, see you, I think, next week. I'm, I don't have a camera. My camera broke, so I'm waiting on my camera to arrive, and then I can start vlogging again. So we'll just have to do this. Let me know down below, like, if you... Oh, I. Oh, that, Eric said you suck. I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks, Eric. Um, yeah, let me know down below if you want to see this. Maybe next week we can do like a short game live stream. So uh, I'll see you guys in a couple days. Peace.